Welcome to the fourth and last chapter of the book of Second Timothy, Paul talking to his young friend who is now in charge of a church, and he begins, he says, I testify then in the presence of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the one being about to judge the living and dead ones according to his grandeur and his kingdom. So he is uh, attesting this is who Jesus is. He has seen the Lord, the road to Damascus, and has been sent, and he's testifying to others and to Timothy right here, and that he is going to come or be somewhere to judge uh, the living and the dead ones, um, bringing the ones alive with him into the air, and the dead ones will be raised up. And uh, I'm not then... The ones that don't know the Lord will be judged uh, and condemned as anybody that has sinned really is going to be condemned as far as I see it. But Jesus has paid the price for our uh, redemption so we don't have to suffer everlasting or eternal separation from God in outer darkness and uh, where there's uh, wailing, gnashing of teeth. The fire burns forever. I don't know what how it was going to be, how horrible, what's going to be like, but I know one thing: I don't want to be there. And uh, only because of his dying on the cross, and uh, m- my believing and your believing in him, is the the thing that we do. That's actually a work. Uh, it's a work to believe, and. We believe in Jesus Christ. Well, now, believe, though, is a very difficult word because uh, one person can believe. I've given the story before about the two men who sold the business for uh, $2 million, split it, each got a million dollars, and decided to go to the racetrack and vote on the sixth race on Black Beauty. And they walked up to the window to place their bets, and the one uh, partner put $2, the cheapest thing you could do, on Black Beauty to win on the sixth race. And the other one walked up, and he's put his whole million dollars on Black Beauty to win in six. So which one really believed that Black Beauty was going to win? Of course, the one that put the two million dollars up. So there's a lot to believe. And he says now, proclaim, kirikson, uh, the logon, the word. Attend opportunally and inopportunely. Well, Opportunities, when the uh, opportunity comes to you, uh, don't shirk it and walk away, but uh, grasp the occasion. And if it's inopportunely, you're not really expecting it, but something happens, then uh, that also. I was walking down the street and uh, years ago, and I saw this car out in the middle of the four-lane road with a divider, and the hood was open. And I was walking by, and I'm thinking, oh, wow, some poor person or poor lady. I saw the lady standing there, and the car broke down. I kept walking, and all of a sudden, I got a tap on my shoulder from the Lord. I said, oh, yeah, you know, you should go out there. So I go walking out, and I saw, uh, as I was walking back to the back of her car, I saw it, some, you know, those stickers that says something about my, um, I don't know, my boss or something is a, is a carpenter. I, I don't remember how it was, but it's, it was Jesus, and that's what I was talking about. And... A Jewish carpenter, maybe it was. And so I told her, oh, you're a Christian. She said, yeah. And I, I said, the car won't start. And I said, well, I don't know anything. I said, I don't know anything about cars. I, I'm not a mechanic. There's nothing I can do, but I'm, I believe in the Lord. Now, I can pray. She says, well, that's something. And so I put my hand on the radiator. I knew what a radiator was. And I prayed, and the Lord, if you can start this car up, it would be great. I just told her, well, go ahead and get in the car. Let's try it out and see what happens. She gets in the car and turns right. It started right up. I was like, inopportunely. You just don't know how God is going to work. So um, take every opportunity. If it's an opportunity that's obvious or one that's not. And then reprove, reproach. I had to look that up. What's the difference between reprove and reproach? According to the dictionaries, here it is. To reprove is to express a disapproval. It's a mild criticism. So, you know, when you have a mild criticism when somebody's doing something or you just give a disapproval like, oh, I don't know about that. 
Yeah, you yeah, think about it twice or something. Like, and then reproach is to criticize or rebuke someone. It's a harsher form of criticism. This is wrong. You're not doing it the right way, and you shouldn't be doing it that way. That is what reproach is. And that's what uh, Paul is telling Timothy to do both. And then comfort in all long suffering and teaching. So when you're um, going through a hard time and maybe in teaching and people are just hard to deal with, um, take comfort in the Lord and stick with it and teach the word. For there will be uh, a time when this time is not chronos, but a kairos, like the time for uh, planting, the time for harvesting and so forth. There will be a time when they will not endure igienusis didascalias. A healthy hygiene comes from that, and didascalias, didactics. Whenever you see the didac, didas, dida, it has something to do generally with teaching. And they will not uh, endure healthy teaching. Well, this is true. I have seen it. I've seen some... Uh, they don't want the healthy teaching. It's like, well, you're going through the Word of God. Well, that's really boring. I want to be uh, in entertained. And this is happening in so many churches. Uh, tickling the ear as it goes on here and says, but according to um, their own desires, they will accumulate to themselves the daskalus, tickling the hearing, tickling the ears, akoin, uh, echo, acoustics comes from that. Uh, tickling the hearing. I, what, is, what would that possibly be? I was thinking, well, you go to some churches and they tickle people's ears by, I went to one and it was like a lot of end times scenarios, things that could possibly be happening. And boy, bringing in every little thing that was happening in world events and relating it to the book of Revelations. And I went through that for, oh, 10 years uh, with hearing all these different things and people coming and giving their ideas. They were tickling the ears. They didn't know. And then uh, also I tickling the ears when you start talking about other people or other ministers and uh, other religions and ministries, and you find think fault with them, and people want to, wow, you know, I want to hear about that. What's that person doing? And so those are tickling the ears. There's a lot more than just those. And from hearing indeed the truth, they shall turn away and shall be turned aside unto the fables. I look at a couple of the largest churches in the world, or the two largest churches in the world, I really get into the fables. Uh, mythos, a myth is the Greek word, uh, the deriv derivative from that Greek word. Uh, and I, a lot of it's in the, about saints. And they get into all these fables and stories about all these saints. And you go to the church and you look for a Bible. I went to one and I, I went to uh, find a Bible that I could, the Greek Bible. No, there wasn't any. And we went across the street from this large church and went into this, uh, like a grocery store, Greek grocery store. They had everything in there, all kinds of foods. And um, the person I was with had purchased a Bible there about a year before. And we asked if they had an, a, a Bible. And he said, no, we don't have one. She, uh, that person bought the last Bible, the only one we've had. But you go inside the church and there was all kinds of literature on the saints and this and that. And, uh, and you go into other uh, churches, large churches, the same thing. And I look at that as uh, fables. But you, be sober in all things, uh, Timothy. Sober, I don't, and that doesn't mean not drinking, it means be serious minded and suffer hardships. Okay, do the work of an evangelistu, evangelistu, evangelist. Do the work of an evangelist, spreading the good news. That's what it is. Ev is good, and angelistu, angelos is a message, messenger, and a mess evangelist, a transliteration into English. And of your service, have full assurance, the akonian, the deacon, have full assurance of what you're doing. For I already am offered as a libation. That's a um, 
when a, something is sacrificed, they pour out the uh, a libation, a liquid uh, wine and certain things in it on the altar. And uh, here Paul is showing that he's not going to be around much longer. He gives us uh, a litany of things that are happening to him. And the end of this a wonderful man is coming near. A man who would be like, like the Moses of the New Testament. He, I imagine he's probably written more uh, of the, of the uh, New Testament than any other author in the New Testament, sort of like Moses in the Old Testament. Not that he was a, like the Moses, but he was a writer. And he wrote the things of God for us, just as Moses did for the Jews and for us. And so this wonderful man now is coming to an end. The Lord is going to be taking him soon. And he sees it, he knows it, and he's uh, letting Timothy know. And the time of my separation stands by. The good agona, agony, is a Greek word. The good struggle I have, egonisme, I have struggled. The race I have finished. The belief I have kept. Wow. So he's struggled the struggle, and he's finished the race. He stayed. Now, see, uh, we'll go in here later, and there's people that don't finish the race. They walk away. You can walk away from the Lord anytime you want. Uh, he's not going to stop you. From, uh, he'll, he'll do what he can but probably to stop you, but he's not. You, you basically, it's in your hands. Uh, and just like a person that commits suicide, it's in the person's hands. They can do it or not. And so... Uh, but Paul has stayed till the end. He's remained till the end, and he's kept the belief. Even though he had earlier did things against the Christians, he uh, went through a lot of suffering because of be believing in the Lord and changing from the old ways. And in spite of all that, he stayed and while others left. Remaining reserved for me, is the crown of righteousness, Stephanos, that word Stephan. If your name is Stephen, Stephan, it means crown in Greek, the crown of righteousness. This is the only place that these two words are put together and mentioned in the New Testament, which the Lord, uh, the just judge, will recompense to me in that day. That day is when he stands in front of them. And not only to me, but also to all the ones loving his grandeur. And we do. I love his I want to see it. I can't wait. And it's just going to be so glad, to, so wonderful to be gone from this body and of flesh and sin and corruption and a world of um, same thing and to be away from it, to be with the Lord in his grandeur. I, I, it would be like... We just had a recently had election. A man was very, very far behind. Nobody thought he would win. They were celebrating right up until the election time of their of the win and how he was going to win and this other person was going to take over. And millions of people, tens of millions of people, uh, thought he would not make it. But yet he did. He won. It's like, wow. And the people that you know, on the side of the winning side, we're like, ha, oh, I couldn't imagine. It was unbelievable. I mean, there's all kinds of good scenarios that you could see. Uh, like if your high school team is really bad, but somehow it ends up winning the state championship, boy, you would be, but there's nothing about uh, sports is really meaningless. Or your football team wins the Super Bowl and it was the underdog and it wins at the last and oh wow, those are nothing. But for somebody, a meaningful thing like a president or a leader to elect, uh, that is really something because it def directly affects your life. Now that is even nothing compared to what's going to affect our life with the Lord Jesus at His grandeur. I, I know we're going to be given white robes. And we will have new bodies not uh, for sin. And we'll see the Lord. We will be around other believers. And uh, nobody that's unbeliever will be able to come there. And it's going to be wonderful. And uh, hurry to come to me quickly, he says uh, to Timothy. For Demas abandoned me. This uh, Demas was a disciple that was at Rome uh, here with him. The earlier he had uh, traveled with Mark Aristarchus and Luke in various places, but he's abandoned uh, Paul here in Rome, having loved the present Aeona, Eon, the present Eon. Uh, for whatever it was, 
uh, he didn't want um, he, he didn't want to give it up. I mean, whether it was uh, persecution or uh, taking away uh, your wealth or being made fun of or suffering, uh, we don't know. And he's gone to Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia. Now I don't necessarily think that because this one abandoned him that these other ones did also. Crescens to Galatia, and that's up in Asia Minor. Uh, Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia, and that's uh, I believe where uh, what is that? Where Slovakia is on the uh, cross from Italy, uh, east of uh, west of um, Greece. Titus, who is in the next with the chapter we just went through before this one, he went to that Dalmatia. And Luke is alone with me there in Rome. He tells Timothy, having taken up Mark, that's John Mark, the one who wrote the book of Mark, bring him with, I don't know, it's not, is it? No, he's the, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was the same Mark. Take Mark and bring him uh, with yourself, for he is useful to me in service. And Tychicus I sent to Ephesus. And uh, this, Tych- uh, Tychicus was a, another traveling companion with Paul. The hooded cloak which I left in Troadi, we had it translated by the King James authors into Troas, uh, with Carpus, who is only mentioned here, when coming bring, and the scrolls, especially the parchments. I brought a little uh, thing here to show you, the parchment. Here is a uh, parchment. And, and uh it is um, made out of a real thin leather. They stripped the leather and cut it down and were able to split it. And it's real nice to write on, soft. Um, this is a nice piece of parchment. If you get it wet, that's what happens. It becomes harder and it's brittle and it, and it bends because it's a piece of leather. And you can just uh, soak it or lick it and it would soften up. Chew on it if you want. That's what they give, give uh, put these uh, stuff, they wrap them up and they give it to make dog bones out of it <laughs> and uh, out of the skins of the animals. And that would be the parchment. That was what they uh, were writing uh, upon. And um, the scroll is generally something that's rolled up. And the scrolls were probably this material here, which is called papyrus. And you can uh, turn it and wrap it. Uh, in a scroll right on it and uh, it's a lot thinner but it's rougher like writing on uh, corn stalk and uh, it's a harder material to write on and generally the parchment was in leaves uh, that's where they started making leaves so you fold it over and the next one where the papyrus was in a scroll when coming bring the scrolls and especially the parchments now I don't know if there was actually parchment scrolls or not, but the word membranus, we have membrane, comes from that, uh, and biblia, a Bible, comes from that word. Alexander the brazier demonstrated many bad things against me. This uh, Alexander the brazier is five different places in the Bible it mentions an Alexander, and uh, this might possibly be the same one that caused problems for uh, Paul in 1 Timothy 1, 19 and 20. And uh, so that may be him. And then may the Lord render to him according to his erga, ergonomics, work, works, whom you also watch out for. Watch out for this guy. For exceedingly as opposed our words. In my first defense, protea, proton, apologia, apology, no one came together with me but all abandoned me. So he went there the first time uh, to, I, to the judge and the uh, rostrum, and uh, all of his friends abandoned. May it not be imputed against them. This is the Lord said on them. He was on the cross. May it, uh, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But the Lord stood by me, and he empowered me, that through me, the kerygma, the proclamation, should be fully assured. You're there knowing it because I, he was able to speak and I did it and this they can hear it. And all the nations should hear. 
uh, so they are. They did. They went throughout the world. The whole Roman Empire fell and became Christian for thousands of years now. And I was rescued from out of the mouth of the lion. Now, whether that was figurative or he was actually into the lion's pit and lion, we don't know. And and I would if rescued from out of the mouth of the lion. It could have been they're ready to be put out there and somehow he was stopped. I don't know. But the Christians were eaten, devoured by lions in the Colosseum in Rome. And the Lord shall rescue me from every evil work and shall preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. So the Lord will rescue us when we are falling. And it looks like it's all over. The Lord can rescue us and he will rescue us uh, from every evil work. Well, now there are Christians that lose their life. But Jesus says, jump up and down for joy, for great is your reward in heaven. Well, then that's a rescue, I would say, if if uh, you did go through the uh, horror of being beheaded or something, but yet as soon as that happened, you were in heaven in something really a wonderful place and everything, and you were uh, extolled by God, wow, uh, that is being rescued. And he shall preserve me for his heavenly kingdom and preserving uh, us uh, by his Holy Spirit, I believe. To whom be the glory unto the eons of the eons. Amen. To him, God, be the glory. Eons of the eons. He's not just of one time, but of the eons. Eternal, everlasting. And now he goes into little salutations with the people and the goodbyes. Greet Prisca and Aquila. Uh, Priscan and Aquilan. Uh, those were the two... Um, People that were uh, Rome, they were Jews in Rome and were forced out under Claudius. They went to Corinth where they met Paul. They were tent makers. Paul worked with them. When Paul left, Apollos showed up and they discipled Apollos. And now they're back in, uh, uh, well, if it, it must be in Ephesus because uh, greet Prisca and Aquila in the house of Anisiphorus. And this is the only place this is mentioned of this Anisiphorus. Erastus stayed in Corinth, and this Erastus may be the same as in the Roman, uh, the Chamberlain of the city of uh, Corinth. Yeah, it was mentioned in Romans 16, 3, when uh, Paul was um, all kinds of, they're trying to take him to the uh, rostrum and condemn him. And uh, this Erastus was the Chamberlain. But Trophimus I left in Miletus, sick. Uh, Trophimus was an Ephesian. You hear read a lot about him in Acts 20 and 21, a traveling companion of Paul. And then he went with Paul to Jerusalem. And uh, Paul, he was a, wasn't a Jew at all. And when he, the people can, saw him walking in the streets and Paul walking the streets with Trophimus and condemned him because they thought that he took this person into the uh, Jewish temple, which he didn't. And so anyway, he leaves him. He left him in Miletus sick. So apparently, he was in Miletus uh, before I, someplace in this period of time. A hurry before the winter to come. Eubulus greets you. Eubulus is only mentioned here, and Pudens only here, and Linus here, and Claudia, and all the brothers. The Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, Timothy. Favor be with you, the grace of God, the, the favors of God be with you, as he ends his letter to his young friend, Amen, and Paul we hear no more of. The only other possibility is the book of Hebrews, which I believe was written by Paul, but when, it's hard to say, it doesn't sound like it was at the end because it um, was written to uh, Jewish people people probably in Jerusalem. We're going to go into that uh, book next, the book of Hebrews, and I hope you will join us in that book and be a Paul. God bless.